So my mom had these leftover Wetzel's pretzels, right? Shit's fire. Highly recommend. I just got out of work too. Shit is. They get a little dry though, so you gotta make sure you got like water. This is Dr. Pepper, but you just gotta make sure you got fluids. Because this is basically all bread. So, you don't wanna like choke and shit or something. How's it going guys? I'm back in here. It's Raymond. Um, just wanted to give you guys my notable mentions for 2019. Um, I wanted to do my top 10 first, but I don't know. I had some albums that came out this year that I was really a fan of, but didn't exactly make my top 10, but were still worth mentioning, obviously. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna break it down for you. By the way, these are in no particular order. I'm literally just had a list that I wrote down on Google Docs that I'm going from right now, so. At number 10, we've got Steve Lacey's Apollo 21. Now, I've been a fan of Steve Lacey since about like 2016, about my sophomore year in high school, and so um, I, I first heard him off of his demo tape, um, and so ever since then, I thought he had a really unique sound. I, I loved how, how creative he was with uh, how he just makes all of his music through GarageBand. I thought that was a really cool and uh, interesting way of doing things. At number nine, I do have uh, Barami by Kuko. I've been, I just discovered Kuko, or actually my friend told me to listen to him around like 2017. And he has such a unique sound in terms of the whole lo-fi or what's called anti-pop now and his new debut album i didn't think it was his greatest work because i thought a lot of his eps and a lot of his singles um were some of his best work i thought his chiquito ep was pretty good i was listening to him at a time where i was really i was really in that sort of uh, mindset and sort of a, a vibe that he gives off at number eight i've got case study 01 by daniel caesar Probably one of my favorite albums of all time is Praise Break. I liked Freudian, and Paradise was good as well, but I especially liked Freudian. Freudian was the first album that I listened to from, from Daniel Caesar, specifically Best Part uh, with her. That was the first song I ever heard by Daniel Caesar. And specifically for me, what, what separates Case Study 01 from Freudian for me is the way that Daniel decided to write a lot of the a lot of the songs a lot of the lyrics feel a lot more developed and personal where um, Freudian a lot of it felt a little too oriented and a lot of it felt a little bit too structured um, there's a little there's more experimentation on case study and also I wanted to specifically mention uh, superposition I think that's him and John Mayer on that song. I think both of them do a fantastic job and it's it's in my top five for my favorite Daniel Caesar songs for sure. Next up we've at number seven we've got the Free National self-titled album. These guys play with Anderson Pack all of the time and I had been waiting for a while to hear them come out with their own album. They're super funky, a lot of neo soul a lot of bass and drum heavy beats that are really grooving. It's just a great, it's just a great first album, honestly. They do a really good job with introducing the features and they do a really good job of adding in a lot of different sounds as well as keeping to the whole funk and neo soul idea behind their sound and behind their album. They have, I think they had a, a really unique go at it. At number six, we've got Her's new album, I Used to Know Her. I personally like her self-titled album a little bit more just because uh, Focus was one of my one of my favorite songs by her easily. But 
on I Used to Know Her, she gets even more personal, similar to the Case Study album, um, where we go more in-depth into her personality and as well as to what she's been through and her experiences. Gives off a little bit of a similar vibe as to what SZA was trying to do on Control. At number five, I've got I Am, I Was by 21 Savage. I really liked, I actually liked this album more than I thought I would. I was a little bit impressed with 21 Savage this year. Honestly, I had a really fun time with this. Um, the first song, a lot. I thought that was fantastic. I was not expecting the samples to come out of this album, but I like the direction that 21 took this. A lot of the features were really nice, and I it was a nice surprise to see a lot of the people, especially J. Cole on a lot. And also it was a really nice to see a little bit of experimentation, especially with 21 Savage. I didn't like Issa, Issa, whatever the fuck you pronounce it. I didn't really like it that much. I thought I only liked like a few songs, but off of this one I had about like at least five or six bangers that I was pretty much into. I really enjoyed it. At number four we've got Arizona Baby by my man Kevin Abstract. Now for those of you who don't know, Kevin Abstract is from this little this little group called Brockhampton and for any of you that know me you know that I am a massive Brockhampton fan, and I love Kevin's solo work. One of my favorites is easily Drugs off of MTV. That song is fire. That song is fire. If you haven't checked out the music video, I highly suggest you check out that music video. It is really weird, and the editing is stupid, but it's actually really creative and I enjoy the hell out of it. Off of Arizona Baby, the production sounds just as good as a Brockhampton album. My favorites being Georgia, Peach. I really liked Boyer as well. I thought that was a really nice little banger and also the intro. And uh, overall, I thought it was I thought it was a great project for Kevin. Uh, at number three, we've got Earth Gang with Mirrorland. I found out of Earth Gang through Dreamville's album this year. And after listening to Revenge of the Dreamers 3, which you should absolutely check out, pretty sure more people are even gonna find out about a lot of the people in Dreamville now that they've been nominated for, I think like three Grammys, is it three? Ah, crap. Two, my bad, my bad, fuck. Oh. Earth Gang had a great contribution to Revenge of the Dreamers 3, and I, I wanted to check out their new album, Mirrorland, and I was pleasantly surprised with a lot of the bangers that came out of this album, as well as a lot of the old-fashioned style, 90s infused hip-hop, soul kind of beats that came out of it. Probably my favorites would have been Up, Top Down, Swivel, which is also on Revenge of the Dreamers 3, um, and also I would probably say Blue Moon as well. And number two, we've got Spilled Milk 1 by Boz. This has one of my favorite songs, honestly, of the year in it, which is the one with Jid called Fried Rice. I love that song so much. I think the bass is nasty in that song. I loved the song with Ari Lennox as well. Um, I think she sounded really nice on that feature. And Jid's feature as well, his flow on top of, on top of the beat in Fried Rice. I think fit fantastically. It was a little bit odd and I was a little bit worried on how Jid was gonna come in, but he did a fantastic job and I really liked it a lot. And at my number one, I know a lot of people are gonna be both surprised, happy, and possibly pissed off, but whatever. Um, at my number one, we've got Billie Eilish's When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Now, this was definitely one that I actually enjoyed. She just has a certain quality that I actually really do enjoy about her. Her and her brother, what they have been able to do, just the two of them, without being signed to any major label, is absolutely insane. The two of them together have gained such a following that this album beat Tyler the Creator's Igor at number one when this came out. 
and in the past, I think she's only been around for like three years or something like that. I don't even know. She's younger than me, which makes me look stupid because I feel like I'm already freaking behind, which I pretty much am. But, you know, that's for another video. Um, this album actually sounds really good. The production is fantastic. Phineas does a great job over it. A lot of the lyrics that Billy writes, um, I'm not usually a huge fan of, but the execution as well as the delivery from Billy, um, I think really sets this album apart from a lot of the R&B slash pop area of albums that have come out recently. And overall, I think Bad Guy, um, I know that's a little basic, but um, I actually really do enjoy that song. I like the production on it. Her vocals, I think, are a little, her lyrics are a little bit cheesy. The only thing that I would wish that she would do is I wish she would tone up her voice a little bit more, and I wish she would, she would put a little bit more oomph behind her vocals. Um, I know the whole whispering thing is like her aesthetic and I totally, I totally get that. I kind of enjoy it at first, but the more and more I listen to it, um, the more and more it starts to feel a little bit cheesy to me. And so I guess in the future, that's what I would like to hear. I'd also like to hear her on some features maybe. And I know she's a diehard Tyler the Creator fan. And so um, it'd be interesting to see her mix in with a lot of the top artists that are out there right now. And I look forward to seeing her more from her in the future. Thank you guys for watching. These are just my notable mentions for 2019. Again, not in any specific order. There was also a ton more that came out that, um, that I didn't even really even mention. Uh, but... You know, these are just the ones that I figured I should give a shout out to because I personally and really enjoyed them from this year. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll be coming out with my top 10 albums of the year of 2019 soon. Hopefully, uh, I'll be working on that probably through the weekend. But uh, yeah, stay tuned, guys.